work we put in for our, for ourselves is super important. So excited to be here today. It's been a great day already, and this will just be icing on the cake. It, it has, it has. And um, as people join, um, <clears throat> hopefully grabbed an afternoon snack, um, got your water or your coffee if you're still an afternoon. I'm still working on a cup. So, David, it looks like you have your water there. But um, I'm excited. I'm excited for what we're going to cover in this this training. Um, David, I'm excited for the live podcast um, opportunity. It's been a lot of fun so far. Um, I love the questions that that we we get um, throughout and also during. So, um, yeah, as everyone gets joined, just welcome. Thank you for being part of the Energy for Sales family. Um, if you're not following along yet over on YouTube, uh, we're starting out with the <clears throat> QR up on the screen. So that makes it easy for you to be able to go land over on the channel, get subscribed. All of these recordings every month will be uploaded to uh, to YouTube. So that way you can go find them. You can share them with your team. I get asked all the time, can you send that to me again? I It's buried in the email, you know, the Vimeo link or whatever. And I want to share that one specifically with my team or let them listen to this one before our planning session for the new year. And so our goal is to get these in an accessible way to you and what's easier than YouTube and having, having the channel. So we also coach people on setting up YouTube channels. So I told David, I was like, let's, let's get our podcast up there. It's on Apple. It's been on Apple for a long time and Spotify, but so anyway, thank you for being along for the ride guys and uh, scan the QR, subscribe, and then turn on those notifications. So, Hey, also, thanks for uh, calling me out and asking for the same thing like numerous times. Can you send me that? Can you send me that? Maybe I'll do the QR code. I, I will say on the front end, I'm going to potentially ask for forgiveness because uh, it won't be permission. Uh, we have a new kitten. Uh, he likes to spend time on on my desk and on my lap. Uh, hopefully he's sleeping. We, we wore him out pretty well. He wears himself out. So we'll see what uh, what happens. You might get to meet Max, but uh, hopefully and, he's uh, asleep somewhere. And, and any cat people on 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 the uh, call, drop a drop some love in the chat for David and, and Max, the cutest little <laughs> kid, by the way, cutest little kid. He is adorable. So, so yeah, he he uh, he has more than once jumped up on. We, we're in the middle of a podcast, and David literally gets knocked out as claws are climbing up your his back. So. Uh, <laughs> But David, I've, I've, trained, you, man. I've taught him and trained That's... him just to climb up my legs. Good cat, man. Oh, you've I trained him now. Laser. Cool. Oh, yeah, sure. Cool. Just about That's as well cool. as I've trained you, Tim. Hey, you know what? I am a work in progress. But, um, <laughs> yes, you have. Well, we, we are all Much work patience, in progress. my friend. <laughs> we are all work in progress. And that's why today's important. Again, it's one of our favorite uh, things to do each year for our teams, for ourselves, really. Get excited about it. Uh, you know, start, stop, keep, one word, personal mantra building out our plan for the year to ensure that uh, we have the right North star to yeah. head towards uh, for the year. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. Well, I'm excited to kick this one off. Um, again, we try to leave this screen up just for a second, get registered there at, uh, or not register, but uh, follow along on YouTube. And um, as we go along today, um, we are going to absolutely answer questions as they come. So we thought we would throw the, that cute reminder to if you have something, anything, as we go through, um, you know, one word mantras, a vision board framework, one page business plans, and the start, stop, and continue exercise. Please, like these wonderful uh, kids on the video, just raise those hands. We're going to absolutely get to the uh, chat box um, towards the end and answer those. Uh, so please drop your questions in the chat as we go. And uh, yeah, David, so <clears throat> without further ado, uh, and we're going to, we'll put this up at the end as well, but for upcoming, um, in, uh, obviously 2024, 20, right around the corner, uh, every second Friday, uh, we're going to be back with a, a live podcast and already David working on some amazing guests to be on um, some specific trainings in our networking and in our sales uh, to absolutely take our business to the next level. So we'll put this one back up at the end. Uh, so that you can scan this QR and get registered on the Zoom webinar there. So let me stop sharing this screen. And before we jump into today's training, because I just want to shout out and say thank you to uh, Fidelity National Title for uh, being the official sponsor of the Energy for Sales uh, podcast in this live every month. 
Um, I just want to encourage every title agency, uh, sales representative, business development, branch managing attorney or owner on the call today or listening to the recording um, to get registered for um, our Energize Conference. Uh, Maryland is January 17th and then the very next day, January the 18th in, in Richmond, Virginia. So um, get, get your team um, activated, energized, get them signed up. Try to get signed up before the holidays. It's going to be um, crazy, obviously, after and getting into the new year. And you don't want to miss any of the announcements. Um, some of the things that our speakers are providing us before the event are going to be fantastic. Um, so you want your team plugged into those. So just want to do a huge shout out. Thank you to f and uh, family of companies, and also just get registered uh, for Energize. So David, without further ado, man, let's talk a little bit about one word mantras. Actually, before we do that, we sent the handout to everybody this morning. If you've registered since this morning, you might not have received that in your inbox and you will receive it with the recording um, after today. But we'll share the handout on our screen here so you'll see what we're going over. But if you have that handout in front of you, I would absolutely encourage you to pull that up, to take some notes, or if it's printed out, just go ahead and scratch some notes on that handout as we go through this. But David, man, one word mantras. I mean, we've been doing this for what? seven, eight years, maybe? It's been, it's, it's been a good run. Um, when we first got together, we were in a platform where we did this. And we've just continued on our own. Uh, we've held each other um, accountable, uh, at least on the front end. Uh, yeah. Some interesting, um, you know, we had good conversations this week about mantra. I was, I was heading one direction for myself, um, heading a couple directions, and we really just kind of talked through it and, and what does 2024 look like. Uh, of course, having um, an accountability partner that uh, you're working with four or five times a week, like Tim and I do, um, you start to know each other better sometimes than even you know yourself. So it was a good exercise for us. I, I'm excited where where I landed uh, and uh, excited, you know, where you landed. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was good to review the last couple of years. I mean, it, it helped me. I know we're going to get into start, stop, keep, start, stop, continue later. Um, but but that really helped me go back over the last few years and some neat things about that. But um, but the word, you know, came to us. So I don't, I don't know if there's going to be a reveal. I don't know what what you're going to show, what we're going to share, because uh, we, we all you know, we have that. Plus, we have our but but, you know, to create that that. Uh, that North Star to create uh, what it you know, what should the year be for, you know, a, yeah. gu a guiding principle, a. Uh, um, a vision for yourself. And that, that's what the one word personal mantra, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you read through this um, as to what it is. Those who have followed us for a while probably do know, but it's, it, it was good even to read the descriptions again. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So one word mantra, why, why do it? I, I, you, you can study a lot of people who do this. I mean, you could Google online, you'll see a lot of uh, people who actually do some form or fashion or training on the one word mantra you know, vision boarding, we'll get into a framework here next. And so there, there's a lot out there. So don't don't limit yourself here. You can YouTube, Google, there's all sorts of things. But I always believe that our own personal experiences and stories are, are some of the most powerful um, tools when we convey what they mean to us, why you might consider doing one yourself. And for me, it's been kind of that clarion call uh, it's been that anchor that no matter what's happening during the year, um, I, I can keep coming back to. Um, so I was thinking back over the last few years, and it's interesting. Whatever Tony Robbins says, where our focus goes, our energy flows. And that one word mantra that you came up with, and I always like to come up with it before January starts. I'm not a really big New Year's guy, New Year's resolution guy, never really have been. Um, I mean, I've tried it at times, but it's like, you know, I want to be more goal oriented and what one word could really encompass my vision and my goals. That's more about what I what I'm about. Now, some people are more, hey, I've been through something really tough in my life or I'm going through something really tough in my life. One of my friends, her word was healthy. Just relationships, physically she just wanted health. She just wanted to pursue healthy and everything she was going to do, decisions, her yeses, her noes, what she was going to get into were going to revolve around that word. And it really did encompass a lot of her goals and her vision. So last year for me, 
um, and a lot of growth and leadership um, and growing my team and the kids getting older into teenage years. Um, my word, I, I was like, what would encapsulate my goals? And it, it became communicate. And I realized just by focusing on communicate, David, I've always been a communicator. I actually realized it was actually depressing in January as I started really digging in. I realized how poor of a communicator I actually was. And there were people who were like, oh, no, you're not. I'm like, no, I'm just I'm being just self-aware and taking inventory of myself. Sometimes I'm very fast paced and I leave everybody behind. So I've this last year, because of having a one word mantra of communication, I did some strategic LinkedIn learnings. I put myself through some listening training. David, our whole summit back in September, we brought Allison O'Brien in because she's somebody I was connecting with based on a one word mantra. Because to communicate better meant that communication goes two ways. I had to listen better. So again, that one word mantra really guided me. And I look back now over the last 12 months and the word communicate brought me forward. It, it accelerated my life personally, professionally. I mean, this, I'll give another example, quick story. I travel a lot and sometimes I miss those expectations of the kids of, oh, I thought daddy was going to be home. So what I learned was I had to communicate my schedule out better. When they were little, they didn't care. They're getting older now. And so we came up with a family planner and we put in that uh, family planner every, we sit down on Sunday night and then we plan out the next two weeks and then we'll touch it again, look over it if anything's changed for that week. And then when we get to the end, we'll put the next two weeks. So we're always kind of trying to stay two weeks ahead so that expectations are set, especially when it comes to convention season or I'm traveling, uh, you know, overnight, a couple of nights, maybe to speak, to be somewhere. It sets the expectation. The other thing was Jen was encouraging the kids. Don't focus so much on the time daddy's gone because she was noticing some attitudes. But she says, focus on the time you get with daddy. So what it did was it in. It are, I noticed this. It made their time when I'm home. They really do try to be more intentional to spend that with me. So it, across the whole family, that one word mantra of communication and being a better communicator actually had a huge ripple effect. So I share the story because I think that's one of the best ways to um, you know generate that belief on you know why we've been doing this for a long time. Um, passwords expand, David. I know you're a couple work a couple years ago accelerate. Um, you had a new team, you really need to accelerate with them, but also personally. So why don't we share kind of our one words that we've come up with for this year and why? And then as you guys are thinking through and listening in, go ahead and start thinking through what word aligns with your vision. Like, what are you thinking about for 2024? Overarching vision. And then does this word challenge you to grow, develop skills in the areas most important to you? And then like David mentioned, who's a sounding board that you can send three, four, five words to and say, hey, let's chat about these. I want to pick one good word, but I want some input. David did that with me. And like he said, he 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 had his direction, but it was like, okay, does that word really encompass it or would this word get more of the how to it? So David, why don't you share your story and kind of the word you've landed on for 2024? Yeah, happy to do that. And Tim, um, great, uh, great overview. I think the thing I took away uh, that reinforced the most from, from that the right word is gonna is gonna cross over between professional and personal. Uh, as Tim mentioned, acceleration was a word for me um, in the past year or two. Uh, it was very important to accelerate certain things, both on a personal level and professional level. Um, I had transformation as a year. I was going through a spiritual transformation in addition to uh, leading a team through uh, us through an acquisition um, of a major company, and so I knew it was going to be transformation. Uh, so happy to share. You know, as Tim and I discussed this uh, days ago, uh, I've my, my one word for this year is to build. It's it, it's to build um, systems, processes, uh, scale, speed, uh, relationships. Uh, build just just seemed to be a you know a, a very good word for me. I'm going to read from it because I got pretty deep. Um, building health, uh, relationships, effectiveness, memories, happiness, legacy. Revenue, confidence, systems, processes, impact, speed, scale, income, um, and and building others. And so build, build just was it seemed to be the right word. What was interesting when I was struggling with, it, I didn't see it, and then we talked through it uh, back in October. I took uh, my team through. Well, I had them come into the office through a build uh, one day build symposium, 
Mm-hmm. We talked about a lot of these things from a from a standpoint, uh, from a business standpoint. How, how can we build our confidence? How can we build um, uh, our synergies? How can we build our revenue? And so that that's where I landed. Um, you know, again, it, it encompasses for me uh, both sides of the world. And and the interesting thing is, once you see some start, stop, keep, there is some some starts um, that they're going to tie into that. I know we're going to save that for later. Uh, so that's where I landed uh, along with Tim's help. I wasn't far. I was wondering, you know, there was so many things I needed to complete, um, but that, that word just wasn't all encompassing. And so as, as we talked through it, uh, you know, for, for this community, for a personal life, for, um, for the clients I work with, for my teams, uh, that's just where I landed. And, um, you know, again, uh, I, I wasn't going to take the easy route, but I also felt I needed to accelerate, like I had gotten into a, not a neutral position, but but accelerate certain things. And um, I attempted to go back to a word uh, from just a couple of years ago. Uh, and as we talked through it, Tim wasn't going to have it. And, uh, you know, that's how we settled on the word. Um, so... Yeah, I, I I would have given it to you had you fought for a little harder, but um, <laughs> so, but I, I will t- I will tell you I one of my words is focus, and I've had that a couple of years, not in a row, but I've come back to focus because again, four kids and you know high high energy ADD, whatever you want to call it, that's always been my kryptonite, and I and I do recognize that I have things built into my life to channel the focus. But sometimes I feel like while I focus, it needs to be there. I feel like I'm aware of it. I I don't necessarily think the word would stretch me and grow me. So again, I just felt like for you, the acceleration would come through or how would acceleration happen for you? And it it kept coming back to if I build this or if I build this, then we'll accelerate. So it was like, okay, go build the process. So and, that's and now with that word, I mean, I can wake up on a on a Saturday or plan my Saturday on Friday and say, okay, what am I going to go build tomorrow? What, what am I going to build this weekend? Yeah, yeah. So, it's a bring, uh, I think the word too needs to bring some clarity, right, to you. So for um, for this year, if I could share uh, mine is um, Tim. Why don't you share? Why don't you share yours with us? Yeah, and and this is what I'm going to say. Your word doesn't always have to be, you know, um, positive energetic, full of life, dynamic, flashy, right? Because sometimes that's, again, that's personality. Sometimes you pick your word. For me, I looked across all aspects of my life, looked at kids growing up very, very fast right now. They've always grown up fast, but it's like right now it feels like it's accelerating on me. And that's created some internal turmoil. Um, I look at mom and getting mom and law moved in next door. And I look at some of the things that we're working to implement there. I look at the addition on our house going on. Then I look at my business and um, I look at the partnership this last year with FNF and all the wonderful things that we're doing and an amazing group and team. And I'm looking at across all aspects, right? And then the relaunch of my book in January you know, the four part series and that's coming. And so I'm on the phone there and I'm thinking, okay, what, what's the word that's going to ground me and grow me? I can keep coming back and getting grounded, but it's also going to grow me. So for me, for my personality, the word that I came up with is methodical. And I know, again, that doesn't sound flashy, but I just sometimes, and y'all could probably appreciate this being in sales. Sometimes it feels like you have the all the madness going on. So kind of come back to, I want to make sure I have a method for the madness, right? I want to start with method. I don't want to start with madness. Oh yeah, that'd be a great idea. And then, oh, by the way, how do we, how, how do we make this, how, how do we build the method behind this? What's, what is the method? So, and, and then also the method for me is there is a method, right? Having a method that gives me a boundary. That gives me a, a, a chance to say no. And I've realized the older I get, the more, I need to say no and or hold on or let me digest this or let me noodle on this and whatever. So just slowing down, slowing down. And the word methodical also has with it being super intentional and also being very purposeful, being planned and thought out. So 
I always start with the definition of my word. I write it down so it gets into my brain. And then I start thinking, okay, what are the methods in my life? So David, for instance, um, one of the things I decided, one of my methods for 2024 is I'm going to show up in conversations, not so much. I'm always brought in as a trainer or a speaker or a coach. I want to show up in conversations more as I want to learn from those in, in, in the room. Um, I don't care if I'm an expert or not. Just, you know what? Play dumb. My method in it, it, what I wrote down is I want to show up and ask more questions than ever before. So method, method of what is my method of asking questions? Um, what is my method of launching something new? What is my method? How can I do a better job getting buy-in of the team? What's the method? So again, that's that's where my brain, I feel like that's going to stretch me a lot. Um, it's just really focusing in on the method um, and getting obsessed about the method. One time, a uh, uh, massively successful guy told us, um, boring is better. <laughs> like, and I was like, I, I, I didn't like that when I was, I was like, no, the older I get, it's like, I, I see what he was saying. It's the consistent habits that you know that you have articulated down or distilled down and you can articulate well the habits that you know absolutely generate the result. And I'm just going to go be boring about those habits. So methodical uh, and building those methods. So David, from build to methodical, there we have it. Hopefully um, that kind of gave you guys the, the, the roadmap, those questions on your handout. You can answer those as you go through. And David, you and I have oftentimes thrown three, four, five words down and then distilled down which one it is. And this is a great, fun exercise to do as a sales team. Let's not yep. limit, let's not limit ourselves just to us and our reflection. We're going to get two inches of rain Saturday. So they're, you know, great day for sitting down, having some reflection, you know, being indoors with the kids. Let's not just limit there. Let's share this with it. It could be a great team exercise for those sales leaders on the call. Um, we've done it, David, with our sales teams. We've written our words up on the bulletin board or uh, somehow kept it present in front of us. So by the way, where do you, where do you keep your word throughout the year? Do you write it down? Uh, I have it written down. I keep my start, stop, keep in front of me. So it's, it's something, it, you know, that, that I'm reviewing often though it's here. Um, I know that in the past you have had, you, I know you've changed your, your view on the camera, but you've had on your bookshelf. Um, the word right up there, um, about 18 inches from the top of the right. ceiling. Right. So I've, I've seen that there and that that's always a good constant reminder, but, um, you know, at, at a point in time, I more refer to my start, stop keeps just to ensure that I'm, I'm on pace and I'm not forgetting something or I'm falling. If I'm falling behind something, I, I need to really, um, stop falling behind on it. But, but the word I don't need to look at again. I mean, because it becomes that mindset. Right there. It just becomes like, that's your driver. Like, what am I going to go build? Yeah. How am I going to build my people? Yeah. It's good. Um, what relationships am I going to build? Yeah. Uh, how, yeah. how do we build momentum? It just so, falls. It just falls into each, each bucket. It's pretty cool. But it's also, again, the, the driver. Do a one word mantra. You don't forget yeah. it. It's one word. We have a lot of goals, a lot of start. So let's, let's roll. Let's keep rolling. This is fun. It's exciting. Um, I told you guys we had a bonus for you. And um, I'm going to take this next um, small section. We won't belabor this, although I will tell you, I do an entire training. Oh, back to you, David. Hang on. I, I do have a, a quick hack um, for those that do create uh, resolutions. A great hack is if you can design them and start them in the November, beginning of December. That way, when you hit the first of the year, you, it's already at least a good part of, of that habit uh, as a, you know, as opposed to starting in January with everybody else and the gyms are um, empty come February. So well, just a hack. I, that way you already have so, some momentum going into the year. So. Well, you you have always encouraged me with that. I, again, we've talked about the new year versus new day mentality. Tomorrow morning is a new day. I would rather live my life with new day right. mentality than new year. Because then you're waiting weeks to start something as opposed to just begin again tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that, I signed myself and my son up. We're going to go do a 5K in the morning. Um, signed that up for that weeks ago, and we've kind of been training up to it. Nothing crazy. It's a 3.1 miles, but we're going to do that tomorrow morning. I'm telling you, you get a couple runs under your belt um, You know, prior to that new year starting. It's always fun. 
Um, one of my friends who's a mayor back in Murfreesboro, he always had the New Year's Day 5K for the mm -hmm. town. And that was always just a great way to kind of kick off the New Year. So, so you know, mate, that's a great hack, David. Thanks for sharing. And, and I know you're excited about that because, you know, health-wise, you were staying off of the running for a bit. And so and now the too. ability to to go back to the running and Very I, I guess it's ETH. I guess it's Ethan you're running with. Uh, Jeremy, actually. Yeah. I mean, Jeremy. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Well, guys, here we, here go. we go. Um, and, and feel free to snapshot your screen on this one. Uh, this is an exercise that every year uh, we as a family actually sit down and do. I've led a lot of teams through this exercise. And like I said, do a whole training. This could be a literally a two hour training and event and exercise. Um, a lot of companies will bring in poster boards old magazines, do clippings, glue stuff on the board. Um, and I know a lot of people when they hear a vision board or a dream board, um, they think through maybe a past experience and how that was cool, how it helped them envision and visualize things. And if you study the power of visu visualization and the whole like scientific process of our, um, I'm going to say it wrong, but it's the, we have a, a RAS filter and um, I forget exactly the, the, the um david you you probably name it but it's um you basically have this little filter in the back of your brain that shuts out a lot of noise right it's called RAS, ras filter and when you visualize something it actually helps that ras filter um accept accept and that's the thing is you take somebody from you know who always grew up you know homeless or in poverty it's hard for their RAS filter to open because that's all they've ever seen. It's far, it's hard for their RAS filter to open to wealth and abundance and a better life. So that's why helping them to see it, um, envision it is, is tremendously important because that's where belief starts happening, that I believe this could be my reality. Um, it's also why after you go buy a car, you see that same car because you just basically force this something into your mind, brand new car. And now you see it everywhere because your RAS filter is wide open to it. It's it's now in your reality. And so um, there's a lot of science here. I don't want to get too deep today because this was truly a bonus. But I do want to encourage you as you think through our next our next um, one page business plan. I think it's very dangerous to simply go into our life looking at what are my goals going to be. Because at the end of the day, goals are the doing part of us. Vision is the being part of us. Okay. Somebody said our do should flow through our who. Who we are, our do flows through that. And if we aren't careful, we work very hard to come up with goals. And then we fall by the wayside with our goals because we were never first clear on why. Why? Vision is all about the why. The vision is your being, who you are. So the exercise here is very um, basic. You can put on a board a collage of things that you would love to have in your life. Okay. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> I've, I've seen heard a lot of stories and seen a lot of um, exercises go through kind of just this, throw whatever you want on your life board, your vision board, your dream board. And so many times people have come to me and said, it didn't, it didn't help me that much. It, yeah, I put everything I wanted. And most of the time, what that does is it revolves around material aspects, money, house, car, fitness, everything that's tangible for us. So the danger there is, <clears throat> what is my vision for my whole person? Okay. And the intangibles are harder to think about. They're harder to get a grasp on. So to help us with that, I loved how Stephen Covey breaks down the four dimensions of self. And as I read his book, um, probably 10 years ago, and somebody was doing a vision board exercise about 10 years ago that my wife and I attended, I was happening to read right through this book at that same time. And it, it, it hit me. It hit me all at once. My vision board must encompass all four dimensions of myself in order for me to feel fulfilled, in order for me to actually be prosperous in relationship, in heart, in mind, in spirit, not just my body. Okay. 
So what I've done and what I've taken a lot of teams through, and it's very powerful, is either you get a you could get a large poster board, you could take your journal. Oftentimes I'll take my journal, fold it wide open, draw a, a, a line down, you know, vertically down the center in the in the in the binding and then draw a horizontal line right through. So I have two pages open wide and right in the middle, I put my one word mantra for the year. So I'm going to put methodical and then up in the top left, I'm going to write down body. And then Stephen Covey's definition is the need to live. We all have these four basic needs. Body is a need to live. Then I'm going to drop down to the bottom left quadrant and I'm going to put mind need to learn. Now the body and mind on the left side of the page, those are my tangibles. That's how I'm, that's how I think right? And then that's how I live. Now, the body could encompass what I put my body into, my house, my car. It could incorporate my fitness. It could incorporate what I'm going to put into my body, my food. So a lot of times I'll put, like I put one year a smoothie. I want to just start doing smoothies for breakfast as opposed to just whatever, you know, is there. So I was very intentional about that. Um, I put a glass of water, actually a gallon of water last year on my vision board. And I've been very close to getting a gallon a day. Um, not always a gallon, but very close. This made me feel great. So those are the certain simple things that would go underneath body. Um, you could also put house goals. Money goals would go here. Um, because again, that's how that's how you live, how you house yourself, how you care for yourself. And then mind would be a need to learn. So what do you want to learn? Um, we were a blue collar family. It wasn't really um, a, a goal of, of, of my parents or that generation to go to college. So I was one of the first in my family to go to college. I, I had a mentor said, hey, you could go. I'm like, no, I couldn't. Yes, you could. And uh, so I, I went, but I it started by putting on my vision board. Um, I didn't even know how to get there, but I put on my vision board and that helped me get there. So, and then over in the top right is heart, need to love, need to love. And this is where your relationships go. I remember putting a picture of my kids on there and then I dug into how could I love my kids better? I talked to one of my mentors. He's like, are you dating your kids? Now, every week, we have some level, some form of date one-on-one. -on -one. So need to love my wife and I. Dates. Am I being intentional? What am I doing at home? How does that look? Relationships. Relationships, right? Heart. Need to love. Maybe there's a reestablishing of a relationship. Um, so just think through that. Um, the other thing about like heart and need to love is like what fills you up? Um, what would expand your heart? Um, I did a study and, you know, I grew up very uh, physically abused all my life. So um, there's a study that says, you know, abused kids have less gray matter in their in their emotional um, part of their brain. It's like a shrunken amount of gray matter and, and gray matter is our feeling part of us. So how do you expand on that? So I started researching, how do I expand my ability to feel loved? It's hard for me to accept love, right? So I grew in that because of studying the need to love. It's very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. But what would that take, right? What would that take? How do you feel loved? Um, and then the spirit is the need to leave a legacy. This is more your impact. So I have some things on mine, typically around my community, um, around maybe you're a, maybe it's your church, maybe it's your association you're a part of. Um, I know some people have put their, you know, TED talk here. Um, they have put something that they're going to do, write a book here, write a memoir here, um, but something to leave a legacy. This is when I'm gone, what will I be remembered for, right? Need to leave a legacy. Um, this, is our, this is our spirit side of us. So that's the quick framework. And here's the, here's the deal. If you write that down, you can start with words. You can just jot down words first. And then you can go to magazines or Google or whatever, get a poster board. And I'm telling you, this exercise can be a lot of fun. It may feel weird at first. I would encourage you to surround yourself with some friends, some buddies, some girlfriends, some guy friends, you know, break out, the, like, make it a celebration, make it, you know, to, to break out the cheeses, the wine, whatever it takes, like make it a little event and, and have some fun with this. And you'll be surprised. You'll be shocked even what some of your family members put on their boards. I, w I was shocked when I saw my kids put theirs together. I was like, well, I didn't know that. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So, um, so that's a framework, guys. And what happens is we're able to not leave part of our person behind because typically our goals do wrap around more business, more revenue generation, more, you know, what are we trying to accomplish and achieve? And sometimes the latent needs of our self and our body and our being get left by the wayside. So David, what would you add? I don't want to 
belabor the bonus, but. No, I mean, great, great points. And thanks for leading us through that. Um, I can remember years ago, um, someone tried to coin or tag you as the dream board guy. And, And it's super important. You know, I was thinking when you were mentioning about the person came and was like, Hey, I put on my dream board and it didn't help me. If you like in anything else, like life, like anything, if you just kind of go through it as a passenger and you don't do this hard work to touch the the quadrants and put something up there that's meaningful, that's going to make you make that last call, those last five calls, those 10 calls, because you see that Belize or Paris or Brazil is on there. And it's a real thing. You know, one of the teams I had uh, had team of four, uh, the one that was most successful, newer career, married, had a child every day, that commitment um, was there. So his dream board is probably just paying the bills. Whereas others that were more tenured, had yeah. more experience in sales, single, dating, long-term girlfriends, sitting in an apartment. Well, you know, I want to get married one day and I want to have a house one day. Well, that one day, you know, without putting a date or or a visualization, um, you know, I, I wondered sometimes, what is that sense of urgency? What happens at, at 440 at the end of the day when you're tired and, you know, your call list has five more people on it? Well, you know, I'll get married one day. Well, I'll make that call one day. Whereas the dream boards um, really help, um, you know, in addition to maybe getting married one day and maybe having a house one day, uh, this person also shared that, uh, well, you know, I've, I've got some college debt. I said, well, praise the Lord for some college debt because I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't hear or feel anything that was so compelling. So I think in your story, oh yeah, I put that on my dream board and it really didn't help. Well, then, then you didn't do the pre-work. It, it really wasn't something that you were striving uh, to achieve that you would, yeah. you know, really, really give it your all every day. Yeah. Not some days, but every single day. And we're all human. We're going to have off days. We're going to have off weeks. In sales, we're going to have off months and quarters, hopefully not two in a row. Right. Um, but it, if, if it's real, if these things are real, if you really get inside of yourself, like like what should be in my heart quadrant? What should be, you know, spiritually, what do I want to accomplish? Because it is about the whole person. So. Well, it's interesting, too, because and it will also guide you year to year. So like I threw on my very first dream board I ever did. I threw on I went and found a picture of city council because I re- wanted to run for city council. So I put on city council and then uh, I also put on there going back to school. So I start going back to school to become an attorney and I'm two years in accounting and I'm like, man, why did I ever sign up for accounting? It's just not who I am. I'm not a spreadsheets guy. And, but because city council was on my dream board, cause you know, on my spirit, like leave a legacy, I went and, and to become a, like to run for office, I was like, I need to be around somebody who's run for office. So I went and made friends with Mike Sparks, Shane Reeves, like these guys. And I actually helped um, Esther um, in uh, Smyrna, like um, Kelly Beam, and like others in that like Chamber of Commerce political arena. And I helped them on their campaigns. Well, I actually got to see what I didn't want to be. Like, I didn't know what I didn't know. So I actually got to see that maybe it's not city council I want to be on because I couldn't live that. I don't want I don't want that. But what I did want to do was help make change. And I knew how to tell. I I was good at telling stories. In fact, one of them, when they won, the news camera was there. They're up in the room counting votes still. And the news camera comes to me and like, hey, how was it out there? Can we get you on camera and, and talk? And they thought I was on like the official campaign. I was just volunteering. So I get on the news and like my everybody, my family is like, we saw you on the news. And I'm talking about how great the polls were and all this. Well, I went back to my um, counselor at MTSU and said, hey, I think I want to switch my major to. And now I'm a non I have three kids. I'm just I'm just trying to get a degree. I'm like, I want to switch my major to mass comm public relations. So she helped me. Smitch, and then it was like the next two years were a breeze because it was my DNA. So I found myself through a vision of what I thought I wanted to be. And it educated me into like moving those pieces around. But again, the visualization of city council made it so much easier to pick up the phone and call a senator or a con- or a representative. Whereas to pick up that phone before was a little intimidating, daunting. Why? I didn't have my why. It wasn't clear. Mm-hmm. So the same thing with your goals. If you see it, if you put on their zero debt or a pie, like I want to have 
a thousand dollars emergency fund and debt free, put that on your dream board and then look at that. And then every time you say no to McDonald's or Starbucks coffee, and that's five dollars and every month that stacks up to 50 extra bucks or 100 extra bucks that you're able to pay down principal balance or whatever. And trust me, when I tell you it absolutely works. I put on there I wanted to have two, uh, my house paid for in two homes, one for my mom and one for my mother-in-law. And today that's a reality. And it all started with putting on, cutting out some little houses and putting them on a dream board. So, and it's not to brag, it's just, it, it made the discipline of money so much easier for me because I was visualizing. And then I went and read, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read Thinking Like a Millionaire. I read some books that would educate me to think about money differently. So just think through this, guys. It's so exciting, so much fun. And um, listen, I, I get passionate about it. So David, I'll take it, dream board guy or not. I, I like vision better. Um, I think dreams, we dream at night in the cloudy cobwebs of our mind. Vision is what we strategically sit down and think through what would I like to, who would I like to be in, in five, 10 years? And, and then what intentional choices do I have to make to get there? Life is all about a series of choices. So good stuff, man. Um, and thanks for sharing those experiences of people that you've coached and mentored through. Um, let's, let's roll down to the one page uh, business plan. And as we get into this, um, <clears throat> we put in here, again, listen, we all represent companies. We all represent businesses. Um, maybe some of you all on here have a side hustle, right? Or maybe some of you all on here um, are on in the boardroom often with business owners. So I don't want to convolute this with your company's business plan or a, or a one-page business plan for your, for your company. This is your life business plan, your business plan, right? How do you increase the profitability in your life? How do you increase the impact? How do you increase the capacity, right? Business, we think about business, acquisitions, being profitable, earning a profit. Like think about your life in that term. How do you become more profitable, expand capacity? So as we talk through one page business plan, I like to say anything is possible for the person who dreams big, goals smarter, and then takes daily action. Okay. Dream big, goal smarter, act daily. So, so, um, and, and when we say smarter, I do want to just take a quick brief time, brief section to talk about smarter. We've all heard the acronym, but you know, smart, um, and then smarter. Um, so specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound, and then evaluated and rewarded. OK, so that word smarter is strategic in there for a reason. So just kind of think through that acronym as you come up with your goals for 2024. But David, why don't you talk about goals for a second and uh, and what that looks like? Obviously, the goals being the not necessarily having the metric tied to it, as we'll get to objectives later, but just the goals like the end state. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, so. Uh... Good stuff, Tim. And uh, when we were working on this, uh, it, it was important. We went back to to really some definitions of what what is the difference between a goal and an objective and a tactic. And uh, so it was, you know, really good. I think that um, you know, here we sit, uh, December eighth. Uh, I've got a couple more weeks. Um, hopefully, we've had a good year. Uh, hopefully, um, even if we've had a good year, we probably wanted more. But but. You know, without a goal, um, you're just rudderless. And and you know, we can we can talk at nauseum about goals. Um, again, they they need to be they need to follow the smart. And I had not heard of smarter. I like that. Um, but 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 the more specific, the more measurable, make them attainable. Not a layup, but not something that's so far out there that that you're never going to uh, achieve it. Which means that you're defeating yourself even before you get started. And then put, putting some time frames around it. Um, again, super important. Uh, do it professionally and personally. Uh, you can, you know, you can even then take it as you're working on a project. Well, well, let's let's talk about what the end in mind. What what goals? What are those specific things? You know, list. You know, at least three to four for yourself. Five if you want. Um, if you get too many, you're going to get lost. You can always complete something, and and then add something mid year. This is not an exercise, as, as Tim mentioned earlier. You know daily resolutions versus a, a yearly resolution. What am I going to go achieve today? This, These are your North Stars. These are those things um, that when you sit there 
December 8th of next year or the 9th or the 10th. I know we have leap year um, is next year. So I don't, don't know when this session will be again. I didn't look at that, but, but you really feel accomplished in that. But again, something that, that, that is going to move you forward in one of those key areas, um, you know, life, skills, business, uh, write them down. And, and, and to the point from earlier and, and again here, if there's not a why behind it, like, why is that important? Yeah. Um, if it doesn't, doesn't pass that for you, I mean, you can play around with this and, and set non lofty goals and things that you already know are going to get accomplished and it's not going to move you forward. You, you yeah. want, you, you want to have it be a driver. You want it um, to have, you want it to be something that when you accomplish it, it it's a big moment. It's like I yeah. set out to do this and, and, and I made it happen. Tim, you going back to college with three yeah. kids. Yeah. I mean, that that's large. It was it was a big goal. You know, it was interesting because we we did the big hairy audacious goals, the BHAGs. And yeah. one of my BHAGs back in, I think it was 2015, was to write a book. And I know that, you know, many times I had, I had coffee with somebody and I'd share a little bit of my story, my letter of forgiveness to my dad, or you know, how I, you know, overcame the death of my brother and like my mindset coming out of that. And and people would literally tear up crying mean, grown men business owners they tear up and cry and they leave coffee saying wow thank you. you you've you've really helped me you've changed my perspective on something so i knew i knew deep in my heart like there was i needed to get this out and but it was like i didn't know how to write a book i didn't know how to write a book i i, I truly david it wasn't so much i didn't know how i didn't believe i could or i didn't believe i should so i went and put a book i actually created a cover I had somebody take a picture of me jumping and I created a cover. Never, my, my picture is not on my book. I decided later my picture did not need to be on the front of the book. But at that moment in time, I needed the visualization. I took a picture and I made a book cover. I paid somebody to make a book cover and that went on my vision board. Three years later, I published my first book. It's like, it's crazy, but that was a big hairy audition. So I think your goals need to be something that almost is out of reach. Like Joe Vitale says, a goal should scare us a little and excite us a lot. So if you think about that, dream. Give yourself permission to dream again. Um, I want to go back up here real quick to this James Allen quote, and this is why we started with vision. Dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, so you shall become. Your vision is the promise of what you shall one day be. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. And I know it's an oldie, but it is a goodie, right? It's like dream lofty dreams. Be willing to dream big. Be courageous enough to dream big. And then be realistic enough to set smarter goals. Be specific, more specific. And a goal should encompass, a good goal encompasses about a year. Now, if you knock it out in eight months, woo, awesome, right? But you'll, and you'll be surprised how much faster you'll knock it off if you have a goal written down. Like Zig Ziglar says, we can be a wondering generality or a meaningful specific. So to bring a vision to reality, create some goals that are with just outside of your reach. They stretch you, they scare you a little, excite you a lot. And then we're going to go down into some objectives. Now in business, same thing. You could set a revenue goal. You might have an actual specific number on the measurable and it's attainable and you have a revenue goal. So I'm just going to break this down into business sense for, for a second. Well, then what's the monthly and weekly measurable steps to accomplish the goal? Those are objectives. Those are objectives. Now, objectives need to be aligned with goals. So really, at the end of the day, take your goals and deconstruct them. We were going through a planning session once, David, and it had your goals. And then it said, all right, on these goals... What are your objectives for the quarter? And I believe it's very wise to set quarterly objectives, 90-day quarterly objectives. Many, many coaches use this model. It's nothing new. We didn't invent this. 90-day objectives that are tied to your annual goals. Well, call it OCD or call it whatever. I was like, well, how many weeks is that? That's 18 weeks. So I was like, all right, quarterly objective. Maybe it was 18 weeks. Maybe it was whatever. I think in the quarter we were on, it was like 18 weeks, 17 and a half, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to give myself 18 bullet points based on that one objective. 
So I, I deconstructed further the objective and thought, what would it take? If you're in sales, this might be one of your objectives is to sign a new customer. Well, what are all the bullet points you can think of? What are the approaches, the, the, the steps? What needs to happen first? Step one, two, three, four, five. Really think through. Because then what you're going to give yourself is a weekly, actionable, small step objective based on this quarterly objective, which will get you to your annual goal. If you'll deconstruct, it's amazing. It's amazing what can happen. You will absolutely think through things you never thought of before when you deconstruct. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Well, how, how is that going to happen? Oh, so for instance, I want to do a TED Talk. Okay, what do I have to do to do a TED Talk? I don't know. Let me go watch a YouTube video on how to do a TED Talk. Okay, objective number one. <laughs> objective number two, there's probably an application out there somewhere. Application. Objective number three, probably going to need some references. References. Who am I going to contact? Who would give me a good reference? Number four, you're probably going to need a video, a, a, a link to a video of you speaking somewhere. Okay, I'm going to need to go speak somewhere. I mean, get in front of the Rotary, get in front of the Chamber of Commerce, something. So that's objective number. So as I deconstruct, right, I'm, I'm starting to think through the gaps, the contingencies. So, David, what would you add to objectives? I mean, deconstruct. Um, you do this so well. You've coached me through it many times. Well, I mean, again, these these are the these are the tangible um, step by step objectives. You know, we've all heard um, how do you eat an elephant? Well, it's one bite at a time. Well, this this is really starting to break that down. Um, when you look at a quarterly objective, great place to start. I already looked for for Q one. There's 64 business days. Um, we get mm -hmm. a leap day that helps. March has five full hol five full weekend days so we lose 10 days right there so there's 64 days so you start with with your data around that so you know you have 64 days so how are you gonna how are you gonna deconstruct how are you gonna break that up um you know you're gonna find things that, that you don't know you know tim one of the things when you were talking about the ted talk well uh what's your topic gonna be um you're gonna have to write the ted, TED talk you're probably gonna have to record it uh to show your delivery of that um, but the objectives are the things that you go back to. Of course, um, an objective has to roll up uh, to a goal. And sometimes you're in a team scenario as well that you might own that goal or and own that objective, but you might have others that are helping you with it. So understanding the play, you know, owning owning a goal, owning a priority, a rock, whatever you call it, doesn't always necessarily mean in a business stand. Uh, situation does not always mean that you're doing all of the work, yeah. but that you own it. I'm taking ownership over it. Um, you know, I'm taking ownership of the team. You know, I have to commit a number to my organization. So I've got my sales team that has to um, help me get there. Now, how do I support them along the way? Uh, so, you know, objectives are, are the, are the, I was going to say go forward objectives. It is a go forward objective. Like, what do I have to do? How am I going to do it? By what date? Again, the more specific uh, you can be, that way you can monitor, am I ahead of it? Am I behind? Do I need to double down on this? Do I need to move that around if if I get behind on something? Uh, Tim, also, there's um, there's there's some questions uh, yeah, in the so chat. I saw, there's one, I, there's I one in particular... Too. Yeah. Um, I don't want to just stop our 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 moment. No, we need we need to. to. I was going to go there. I, so, I, Jer get I think so. The question is: Should determining consequences for not accomplishing goals be part of the process? Um, you know, <laughs> I I don't personally like it. I mean, there's enough shame, and I said I was going to do this, um, and I didn't get it done. Um, though a lot of people are consequence minded. Uh, you know, I I've seen scenarios. You know, I'm going to make 20 calls. Um, or I'm going to talk, I'm going to have a conversation before I go to lunch. Like I am not going to eat if I have not moved this forward. So, so it's kind of a consequence. Now, granted, I could go a couple of days, probably even a couple of weeks um, and, and not eat and, and not perish. Um, but, but <laughs> somewhere in, somewhere in that system of, um, you know, if I don't reach a goal, I feel bad enough on myself. I mean, that that's a pretty big consequence. Tim, what what are your thoughts? What's your well, I think I think what you said, right? I think there are some absolute you can kind of maybe hold back. I like to think about it more as far as holding back a, a reward. 
chances yeah. are we're already struggling or feeling the consequences of four choices up to this point. So it's it that's what's propelling us into setting a certain goal, right? We're always strapped financially. So I'm therefore I'm going to set a goal for this. I'm, I don't feel great. So I'm going to set a fitness goal, lose some weight. I'm going to, so we already kind of feel the consequences. So that's where when we write down goals, maybe your why is I don't feel great. I want to feel great. I want to feel great again, right? When I started doing yoga and took a 200 hour class through yoga and ended up becoming you know, like a board member for a yoga association, like I put on there, I wanted to be loose. I was tight all the time and I was running marathons. I was tight. So my end goal, my why was I wanted to feel loose. I wanted to feel free. So maybe that's the why encompasses the, the feeling of the consequences you're bearing. Now, to make it fun, I know some people, they wanted to clean up their language. I don't know if that's like hip or woke anymore. But anyway, it's like, we want to clean it. So they made this like um, uh, curse jar or, or to tip. They had to like put a dollar in the jar every time. So I, I think that sometimes you can come up with a fun consequence um, just to just to keep it front of mind. Um, and then one guy was like, well, it was the money went to charity. So I just cussed up a storm. So I was like, OK, maybe that didn't work. So um, so I think some things like that, I think holding back, you know, going into Starbucks and I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send three um, emails that are diff like either a, like a difficult ask or asking for business or make a phone call before I walk in. David, I've done that in the past. Super successful and say it was fun. But I was like, I'm not going to go get that coffee till I did the hard. So it was like, I just delayed the reward. So maybe that's a way. And Gerald, sorry, it's Gerard. So sorry about that. But um, yeah, great question. Absolutely great question. Yeah, I, I'm very much a, a, a reward um, versus consequence. I mean, again, uh, not getting something done, letting people down that, you know, that 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 kind of has its own consequence. You, you've kind of bruised your your brand and and um. That's not good. Yeah. Or you you've had to you've had to make a withdrawal out of the goodwill bank. Sure. As opposed to a deposit that day, but good, good, good stuff. So again, start with vision. That is the being. Goals are the doing. That's who I that's the end state. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna go do and I can't have done. The objectives is a deconstruction of those goals. And the and the objective can be a, a whole lot more measurable, right? It's I need to fill out one application. I need to go record. I tell you, like you can be very measured and much more channeled in the objective. Now let's get down to strategy and tactics because strategy, uh, why we why we insert strategy here is it's it's more of a question. It's more of a have I thought through the best approach for each step? Now <clears throat> you may be trying to do something in your business and your goal and objective they kind of look similar to the company down the road, very similar. We want more business. Here's the revenue number. Here's how we're going to get more business. Okay. Then your tactics, those are the daily actions to complete. Those might look a lot similar. We're going to send this many emails, make this many phone calls, whatever. Strategy is what separates people. Strategy is where separation can be found. Strategy is, have I thought through the best approach for each step? Let's take this back to the TED Talk example. Okay. I want to do a TED Talk. I wrote down my goal. I wrote down all my objectives, but what if I did this? What if I called my buddy David Randall, who I know has done a TED Talk or two or three very successfully? What if I call him first and ask, where'd you stub your toe along the way? What approach should I take? And I asked, and he guided me on best approach, best practices. This is where masterminding can be very, very valuable. This is where I would think through absolutely who's done it, who succeeded, who's failed. And I would start here. I would look at strategy. And then also, okay, great. Thank you, David. Is there a better approach? David might have done his TED Talk 10 years ago. I'm doing mine now. We have all sorts of technology and tools at our fingertips. Like, what's the best approach today? Really do some critical thinking here. This is where ideas are born. This is where um, divergence happens in a marketplace. This is where you can niche down. This is where you can create something special. Really think through strategy. Really think through strategy, okay? So you might be looking at, you know, social impact. You might be looking at, um, you know, setting up a YouTube channel. Like, okay, strategy. What are you going to do? How's it going to be different? What's the differentiator? This is where strategy comes into play. So that's why we insert it here. Um, David, what would you add to strategy before we 
move down to tactical. No, I, I, I think that's great. Um, a lot of, a lot of teaching like this doesn't, doesn't insert strategy. And when we were talking through this the other day, yeah, we can go and figure it out on our own or strategically, who do I know? I thought it was a great example. Um, you know, we even took it a step further. Dave Rendall, um, where's pink? Uh, that's why he's, he's noticeable and distinguishable. And so, um, do you send them a letter in a pink envelope and that, that even separates yourself. So that that's even more advanced strategy. So once you've gotten the, you know, a strategy, then how can I even improve upon it? So, uh, nothing really further to say, um, most like, I, I don't always think that way, like, okay, I'm going to go do a head down. What do I got to, what do I have to go do? Yeah. And you know, th there's a world of people out there that, that will help us along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And then the tactics, I mean, this, again, we don't need to belabor the point. Take your objectives. If you've broken them down monthly uh, or quarterly, then monthly and weekly, or just quarterly and then weeks. I mean, I like to think quarter and weeks. I mean, months come and go really fast. Like I like to think weekly. Then, okay, what are the daily actions? If it, if this is a week objective, what are the daily actions I need to get that done? So how many phone calls to get that done? How many emails? How what's that? Again, I go back to sales and business growth because that's what we coach in all the time. But I'm again, this can go into like if if I have a weekly um, you know, goal with a relationship, like what like what does that look like? Um, so take your objectives and then break them down into daily actions. And this really is where we're gonna get into the habits here in a sec in a second. Um and then one one habit, and David, why don't you talk about the habit about going into your day with three actions i know that comes from a, a charles a charles swab story way back when coaching you know the rockefellers on 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 focus and getting things done but um but what's the power of going into your day with three um action items tied to your goals you know i've i've always asked teams uh in huddles uh to present that i think that um some people will want to overcommit and five, six, seven, eight, nine. We talked about this in goals as well. It's good to keep it. Three is just a, you know, it's just a good number. Um, it's attainable. Um, there's enough to mention it. And instead of, you know, I, I can remember one time, this is about a decade ago, uh, one of my peers, a leader came in. Oh, you know, my top task today, I already got that completed. It was like 8.03 in the morning. It's like, okay, so like, what's your top task now? <laughs> So it will help you. Okay, that's great. I'm sure it was something that you weren't proactive with anyway. It was a reactive thing. Oh, I got it done today. Okay. So so you're not going to strive for anything today. So the habits, you know, and and you know, three uh, you know, three good tactics of what am I going to go achieve today? And then you know, the other habits that we talked about, we haven't really talked about, like how are you going to start your day? You know. Am I going to start with a cup of coffee? Am I going to review my emails? You know, what does that look like? What what are what are the habits that I bring in every day? A lot of them will come from your starts from your starts and continues. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Which I know we'll we're, yeah. As a time check, we're sitting at thirty three after. So we've got um, yeah, let's, about twenty something minutes. Let, so. let, let's wrap this one up. So I would yeah. absolutely encourage everyone to work through your own personal SWOT analysis. I know we we've all seen this we've gone through them or if you you know in college they run us through this stuff it's, it's pretty rudimentary we don't need to belabor the point but this is more on a personal level what are your strengths what are the weaknesses that that, that get in the way of your growth have gotten in the way of your growth this will really tee up your start stop continue if you'll work through strengths weaknesses yep. weaknesses opportunities and trends and we it, it's threats or trends david i know you like trends like what's happening out there what should we be in tune with um so work through that just jot some stuff down on the page here. And then like David said, the habits, those are the repetition needed to set me up for success and completing my tasks. I may not have. And I do, I do want to say one thing about SWOT. So anytime you do a SWOT analysis, you know, personal and especially professional, your strengths and weaknesses are internal, like yourself and your organization. What are, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? Your opportunities. And in the past, it was always threats. Yeah. About a decade or so ago, a lot of people started subscribing to the fact about trends, sure. like what trends are out there. But your strengths and weaknesses are internal, either personal, team-wise, inside your organization. Your opportunities and, and threats or trends um, are externally facing. Like what's happening in the market? Yeah. What, what's happening with a competitor? 
you know, they've, they've stopped offering this. So that's an opportunity right. for us to double down on growing that piece of our business. Yeah. I also think when it comes to like a personal opportunity externally, uh, here's where if you look at your strengths, okay, how can I leverage those into opportunities? That's where I think a lot of people find their personal niche, their their brand as a, as a sales professional. You have a great opportunity to create something unique, niche down and special based on your strengths. But that special offering, that's tie, that's you, that's your personal brand. So thanks to think through some opportunities there. Um, I go back to one of my sales rock stars and she said, I want to be confident in front of a group to speak. And she's really stressed herself. And she texted me the other day. I did it. I spoke for the first time. It was short, sweet, but I did it. My like, boom, that would be an opportunity going into the new year. And do you think she's going to have greater impact, create more business from that? hundred percent, hands down. Um, so the habits. So think about it this way. You don't drink any water. You don't eat breakfast. You work yourself r- ragged by noon. Do you feel great for the rest of the day? Trust me, guys, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. I've done this. It's not healthy. You know, burn the candle on both ends. Don't get enough sleep because you just have so much to do. You don't know how to say no or delegate. Like, how can I create habits and boundaries that will tee me up for success in completing my tasks? So habits are the repetition. Hurdles are the resistance. So think about, you know, you always said you wanted to, you know, get up early, but the resistance is there's something in your home life that you need to have a difficult conversation about so you can, you know, get to bed earlier or you need to, the hurdle is resistance anticipated. Um, there's, you keep running into that same person that's just a hindrance to you. Um, maybe uh, maybe somebody you work with or somebody, you need to have some level of conversation or a plan. Um, think about the hurdles. Maybe you have a habit that, a, a bad habit, like a, a negative habit or, or a toxic relationship. You need to think about that because what happens is we come up with all the vision, all the goals, and we haven't thought about what's my contingency when this happens. So contingency coaching, contingency planning is very, very critical. Now, as we wrap this one up, this is an exercise you can take home. Uh, these last two, um, multiplication and skill develop- development. John Maxwell told me a long time ago, um, you know, you can think in addition or you can think in multiplication. So when you think in multiplication, or if you think about addition, you could say, who are my five best clients? And this is just an example for business development since we're in sales here. Um, who are my five best clients? All right, let me go add five more this year, right? So, and we should do that. That's addition. Who are my five best clients? What did I do to win that business? Maybe I've gotten away from. Oh, wait, l- how can I go do that again with those new five, okay? But then who liked my best five? Could they introduce me to? Now we're thinking multiplication. The, the, the young rock star that I told you about wants to get on stage to speak. She's thinking multiplication. She's thinking multiplying her impact. She's thinking get out. She has a voice. She says the same thing over and over and over to her clients on a daily basis. How can I get in front of a lot of people and say that same thing and educate and empower? So multiplication. Multiplication takes stretching. It takes envisioning. But think multiplication this year. And then to do that naturally flows into skill development. In order to multiply, what do I need to learn? You could think, take this down very rudimentary. Who like them can they introduce you to? Okay, so if I'm going to go ask one of my best clients for a referral, how do I do that? Maybe you sign up for a class on asking for the referrals. <laughs> David, we teach that class. But I'm, you know, skill development, maybe some sales skills, maybe some, you know, um, interpersonal communication skills, right? So just think through multiplication and skill development. David, what would you add there? And then we'll go into the start, stop, continue exercise to, to wrap up. Not not really much there. I, I would say as far as skill development, the world is changing and advancing at a rapid pace, the fastest pace ever. And if we're not staying, if we're not educating ourselves, uh, we're, we're just getting further and further behind this, uh, this new generation coming out, very powerful, the levels of new generations. But skill development, I mean, that that's that's a non-negotiable. Um, we don't want to get left behind. Yeah, 100%. Always be learning, always be growing. Stephen Covey, David, you always quoted me, sharpen the saw. Just go back, you use the saw, sharpen the saw, stay sharp, stay learning. Um, and, and also, I would say this, real quick on skill development. Um, podcasts, Audiobooks, 
um, TikTok influencers. Listen, I've got a podcast. I love when people subscribe, listen in, whatever. Being plugged in and just listening constantly to that, while that could keep us in a good frame of mind, could turn us on to something, could inspire us, could help us, and that's great. Maybe it's a class you need to sign up for that's more of a soft skill. Um, we talk, I already brought up Allison, but I'll bring her up again. Maybe it's joining one of her cohorts for a five-week period on learning how to be a great listener. Because from that time forward, from that point, she's going to break down some metrics, some science. She's going to give you the playbook so that you can then in every conversation be that much more impactful. Maybe it's a LinkedIn learning class. So maybe it's more of a school scenario. Um, you know, Toastmasters, you want to learn how to speak. Maybe it's signing up for something that's more rudimentary, gets you unplugged from the tech and in a room where you're actually physically working the muscles, okay? Mm -hmm. Workshops. Think about getting yourself in the gym when it comes to skill development. Because I think so many times we, the, 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 the um, surrogate there is we, we, we just turn ourselves on to podcasts and audiobooks and there's no involvement and it doesn't really build the muscle and build the skill. So just want to encourage us with that. David, I'm going to turn this over to you because this one, you, a long time ago, brought into my life. And it has become a staple for us every year. And we have a lot of fun with this. So why don't you run us through Start, Stop, Continue? And uh, yeah, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one last thing. I mean, I'm like everyone. When we talk about... Uh, skill development and learning new things. I mean, I wake up some days like, I, I don't want to have to learn one more thing, um, but I know that I have to. So so we just have to jump in. Um, I'm a little older than Tim. So I've learned a lot. Not that much. You're so young at heart, man. Yeah, that that that's true. Thank you. So start, stop, continue, start, stop, keep. Super important. Um, yeah, we do it annually. Uh, it's probably something that should be done monthly. It definitely is something I, to review. What was interesting this time, um, I went back through my last couple of years. Of course, I, I know my start, stop, continue, uh, but I like to refer back. And one of the things I was I was struggling with a little bit, and I told Tim this, um, I, I'm not finding a lot for my stops. And, and having gone through this year after year, hmm. when you realize that you've addressed something on your stops and, and if you follow through, um, hopefully that's not the biggest part of your list. Um, so I'll just, I'll just go through this start, you know, start what, what things, you know, that, you know, in your heart, you know, these things, both personally and professionally, do I truly need to start to accelerate myself and my impact? We all know what they are. We, you know, especially if, if you're paying attention to, to others around you, those that are successful, like, what, like, what do I need? What do I need to start doing? Um, you know, I have found some things on my list for this year that, uh, were on a, a continue um, that I was doing pretty well, but they kind of dropped off. So I need to restart them. I need to start them back up. Drinking enough water was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, had a very not good year going to the gym. So th those are some some things I know that if I want to lead a healthy life, I, I I need to do certain things. So so we know I know in my heart what I have to do. Um, you know, as you look either as a leader of your family or as a sales leader. Um, as a leader mentor, I've shied away from from doing these things. I, I can't afford to do. It. We all know we all know what that what those things are. Um, they're all you know. You lay there in bed. It's like okay, um, I, I really need to. I really I, I can't ignore this anymore. Yeah. And and then you know starting those daily disciplines that are going to yeah. enable you and absolutely help you um, achieve your goals. So the start the start stuff um, normally comes up uh, pretty easily. Uh, hopefully. Um, you know, Tim and I have each created our own, shared with each other. Probably not not many surprises. We could probably uh, come close to uh, getting eighty percent of of each other's start, stop, keep. Um, it, so, and, and I, I like I like where you went there. It, this is all about intention, right? This is this is addressing, being willing to put down the things that you know I'm missing. I'm missing the boat on, and then being able to share it with somebody is even more powerful. Where you can set something up. Um, in, in the, you know, we talked about the one word mantra, you know, having that sounding board, that person in your life to, Hey, here's some words. I'd love to discuss these help, help guide me into like a good word for me. Yep. Like there, there's some, there's somebody in your life yep. who 
will absolutely challenge you. I would, the same person could be an, an account of buddy, an accountability partner for you in the start, stop, continue. Start, stop, continue is very practical. This is very much, this is, this is what needs to start. It's a low payoff, waste of time. Um, it need, it needs to stop. And then a high, highest and best high value activity. I absolutely need to start. Um, and, and, and starts might have something to do with, I don't have time for it. If you write down a start item that you in your mind know, I don't have time for, then as we roll down to stop, it needs to, okay, what would this replace? So then it would go straight down into yeah. the stop and I'll, I'll read through these. Well, um, I'll give a, I'll give a personal, uh, start. Yeah. yeah uh, love that, uh, over the past two weeks, I've had three friends whose fathers have passed away hmm. and a college roommate um, that passed away suddenly. And so my mind goes to, wow, you know, your own mortality, your connection with others. So I put in my start for this year that, that I will reach out to one person a week that is a long distance, non-connected friend from the past. Hmm. I just have to do it. The, these events come up, you have a college roommate, fraternity brother passes away and everyone connects. And then wow. we typically will disconnect just as easily as we disconnected wow. over the past decades. So um, just, you know, those are the type of personal starts, um, yeah. you know, that, that I look for. Um, wow. Would I, a month ago, would I put that on there? Maybe not. Yeah. Um, but I looked back on something three years ago and I had it on there and I didn't, it was one of those that just fell off. So, yeah, that's great, David. I know, um, kind of, you reminded me of this. One of my buddies, he did it. He's and one of his starts was start a wall of gratitude. And the last time I was in his office, he had over 60 pictures. Like he printed out a picture of the person and then would write them a letter, a handwritten note, and just specifically tell them something they did meaningful to him to get him mm -hmm. to the point he's at in life. And I just thought, wow. And in that, it stirred up things in him that he wanted to then pass on to others as well. It made him a better mentor, a better leader. So just think through some of those, again, very practical to your life and business now, and also some of those things that are those spirit, those legacy items. That's why the vision, again, can guide some of this. The goal, the one business plan can guide some of this. And then once you get to this practice, it should be, some of this should should kind of fill in itself. Um so yeah, these things for the stock category, these things I'm currently doing add little or no value to my life. This one typically for me, David, I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult because, um, you know, not, not, not difficult, but again, you need to, you need to be wise in this. You know, if you have kids or if you have, you know, you're don't make everything about a, a dollar amount in your life or a bottom line item. You need to also think emotional equity. There are things that when you say add little value, don't just think money, think relationships, right? It's like, I remember the the quote out of the book, uh, Lost Fathering by jo Joshua Mc Mc McDonald. And uh, he said that a, a father took his son fishing one day and the son just wasn't getting it. And later in his journal, the dad wrote, day wasted. Well, what he didn't know, his son kept a journal as well. And he wrote in his journal, best day of my life. So like, think through as you're saying, I'm going to stop this thing. Think through the emote, like if you, oh, I waste so much time with my team on, on this, this activity or this meeting or this, whatever. I know some business leaders who have cut so thin that now the emotional equity is not being built and, and, and the attrition starts happening in their business. The revolving door starts happening. Why? Because they cut something they thought added little value, but it was adding a ton of value to somebody they led. So be, be wise when you come to the stop. But these are more things personally that are adding very little to your life. Point number two here, habits keep me from being the very best version of myself. Only you can decide what those are. Um, we're not here to talk about good habits, bad habits. Just ask yourself, what habits fuel me and what habits distract, detract from me being filled and feeling good? Uh, and then point number three, these things are driving a wedge between me and the ones I lead and or love, right? And these can be more attitudinal. Um, and I think attitudinal habits and things to stop um, oftentimes derive themselves from something I want to start. So, um, so anyway, David, what would you add to stop before we get to continue? Again, hopefully that list is small, but you know, you need to, you need to take a strong look at those things. You know, is if you're spending hours and hours on social media, not driving business or it's great. I mean, we, we all need a break. We all need a 
we all need mental health breaks. Um, but I, you know, I, I had this on my list for last year um, with the exception of LinkedIn and, and I spend less time on social media. I, I don't even think I've been to X, which was Twitter, I guess. <laughs> I, have, I haven't been there since it changed. I think that's been months. So I don't think I'm missing out, um, you know, other than seeing that, and, you know, Facebook the same way. So again, these are very personal. These are things um, that, that, uh, that in your heart, you know, um, you know, have to stop. And yeah. Not a whole lot more to, you know, add there. Good. I'm, I'm glad you brought up social media. Um, again, just the, the stop being distracted by stuff. I think all of us could probably put distraction somewhere on the stop list. For me, I, I think three years ago, I wrote something, stop being distracted. I actually turned off all notifications for social media. You know, if somebody needed me, they would call me, they would email me. But social media was more of a, of a latent, it was more of a, it, it, could just, it could just be there. It wasn't, it wasn't urgent. I can get to it in my time block. So I just time block my social and it has saved me so much fear of missing out when you see that little red notification on Facebook that somebody commented or something on your stuff. Just turn it all off. Um, so again, that's personal, right? That was me deciding that for me, but you decide that for you. So yeah, and a, and a good business one, you know, that I had on for last year, uh, stop replying to emails during my focus time. I have set aside time on my calendar to work on my projects and, and, you know, without notifications turned off, just stop and, and, you know, maybe stop and another year, stop replying to emails immediately. Yeah. We were servicing the entire co uh, company across all things. And, and, you know, I told my leaders like, we, Maybe we need to let let some emails sit for a couple hours. You know, it's also a good practice. A, yeah, yeah. Especially if there's a large group, let's see if someone else weighs in um, on it. But you know, immediately answering everything, like like, it's not it's not always good to be at everyone's beck and call. Now, uh, my SVP, the, the president of the company, yeah. I might give a little higher sense of 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 urgency and and response to that. But um, so, and, and maybe with that stop comes create some definition around what is truly urgent and important and what is just urgent and non-important. So maybe create some clarity so you know what to stop. David, great point. And immediacy to everything um, creates no priority to anything. So you, you yeah. just think through that. That's great. Good stuff. Well, let's hit continue as we wrap up. Um, continue is, again, these are some of the things, again, foundational practices and disciplines that have helped me reach my goals. Um, which I might need to get back to, you know, I might or must, <laughs> I mean, if we're really going to succeed and if we're really going to accomplish and achieve our goals, we, we must get back to. So just think through some of the foundational practices and disciplines that have helped you get here in the past. And these might be some things that have um, been weaker as far as they, you do them, but not on a consistent basis. I'm going to get back to these, make these non-negotiable. I'm going to continue these. Um, and then high value practices that have been working well for me and have continued with greater intention and effectiveness will further advance myself and my relationships. So just think through some of the um, the high value activities you're doing already. And then just, you know, David, you brought up the gym, you brought up water, you brought up, you know, I, something that I will continue doing is when I'm home, taking a walk with Jen every day. When I'm home, we get outside. It's, it's sometimes it's so weird. It is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Because, you know, I may break away at, at a certain moment and, and you know, the kids have, you know, if I already tied her up with something else. And so just being intentional with saying and being giving us, uh, ourselves enough margin to do that, just those things. But when it's done, the conversations we have on a 20 minute walk, I mean, 20 minutes and we go deep places and amazing things and, and the emotional equity. And it's like and it energizes me. I love spending time with Jen. So it's like why like. I will guard that. That is something I'm going to continue. So that's something on mine for this year, but I'll just bring up you know, a personal example. But David, over to you, like continue. I mean, anything stand out this year for you? Well, I mean, I've got my list. Um, one thing I definitely want to continue is my mentorship in the uh, with the MTSU student and the professional selling um, quarterly date nights, uh, you know, with Susie. Um, I do a weekly Zoom call with my uh my childhood buddies 
uh, from Tampa. Um, so, you know, I want to continue that. Um, I'm looking at my business list right now. Um, I put weekly. I'm also mentoring uh, a couple sales execs across the enterprise. So I, I definitely want to continue doing that. Again, that's something that energizes me, leads to the legacy, helps them. You know, my passion is is grooming, growing salespeople. Um, uh, one, you know, one thing I put on my continue, uh, I learn a lot from LinkedIn. I, I Not just, hey, this person went to that job, left that company. Uh, there's a lot of articles that, that keep me uh, attuned to what's happening in the world. Um, you know, I just saw today that uh, peach is is going to be the color for 24. Um, so, you know, just a little stuff. But I will spend 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. I, I will carve out the time. I will start in the morning um, and I will poke in there. And, uh, you know, so th those are some some practical things. Um, I also put uh, uh, keep uh, and continue the 10 second rule uh, before I um, respond, uh, especially on a personal level. Uh, let it sink in a little bit. Mm. So that's a great method. I like that method. 10 seconds. I don't method. always, I don't always follow it. So that's why it, it should have been on the start, but it's going to be on the continue. Good stuff. Hey, in a world of hyperactivity and in a world of being so plugged into technology and inbound all over from email to social messaging to text message and phone calls and feeling completely incapacitated at times, be a beacon of light. Be rooted so deeply in your vision of who you are, who you are called to be. Be Have your goals defined so that you're a meaningful, specific. Show up fully present, present, understanding those habits that you are committed to living in. David, your 10-second rule, I guarantee you, makes you a better team member already because you're intentionally listening more to the person across the screen. See, these little things that we give greater intention to is why we do this training every December. It's become a staple for us. Three years ago, we decided let's share this out with our, with our community. And we've had so much, probably the greatest amounts of feedback from this one specifically. So I would encourage you, I know we covered a lot today. Hopefully it was digestible. And then I would encourage you to print out the three-page uh, handout. And carve out some time, whether that's a weekend with a with a cup of coffee in your favorite chair, favorite most energized spot of your house or on a walk or in, in a coffee shop or just really sit somewhere and take a pen to paper and let your brain, let your mind dream again. Let your brain digest and, and come up with and, and really give yourself that space in this crazy plugged in world, give yourself that space. If you'll give yourself the space and become intentional, you will be able to give others space and help them be seen. Your relationships will be deeper and better for it. Guaranteed. I, I'm living proof and I'm learning every day. So we want to share this with you, David, any closing thoughts? And I'll throw up on the screen um, the QR for next month while you're well, well don't out. throw up on the screen i i, I won't do that <laughs> put something up on the screen. um sh share this share this with the people that will benefit from it uh, yeah. i always make it a practice to uh share specifically my professional start stop continues keeps with my team so they understand what's driving me definitely the one word personal mantra uh so so um i don't look like a three-eyed martian uh when i when i bring something up. Um, but those that will benefit spouses, families, um, and your teams, uh, you know, it, it made a, um, it's made a good impact year over year for them to understand, um, what's important to me and what, what I'm working on. Um, also part of, you know, showing, uh, that vulnerability of, you know, cause none of us are perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but, but they, they get a, everyone gets a feel, um, for, for, you know, what's important because again, the one word personal mantra, that's your vision, that, that that's your vision for the year. Yep. So, um, you know, yeah. and look, don't, uh, you know, the good, if you're doing this for the first time, it doesn't have to be great. It's just a starting point and then go back and reflect upon it uh, and, you know, change it up, add to it. As a closing thought, I couldn't think of anything better. Perfection is the enemy of done. Good is better than great. Work through it. 
have some fun. Remember, if you're not having fun, you may be doing it wrong. Keep it fun. Dream. Give yourself permission. And join us in January. Um, we have a special guest joining on the 12th. And then every second Friday throughout 2024, we're going to be bringing a live podcast where we'll answer your questions live. Thank you for the questions today. A um, couple dropped in here. Thank you, all of you, for congratulating David on his cats. And um, go out and have some fun. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Take care, everyone. Happy holidays.